y'all, welcome to chapel. My name is Gabby, I'm a senior and biology major here at CSU. And before we get started, I'm gonna pray for us. So God, I thank you so much for this time that it, even though it might look a little bit different, we still get to come together and just listen to your word. Um, Lord, I pray that you would speak through whoever's speaking today at chapel and you would use this message to touch all of our hearts this morning. And it's in your name I pray, amen.
Hello, my name is Dr. J. Strack, and my friends call me Dr. J, and I hope we're going to be friends. In fact, I hope we'll be good friends. I'm uh, introducing myself to a lot of folks because I'm, I'm just coming back home, Charleston Southern University. What an incredible place. God used it in my life, transformed my life here came as a brand new Christian, somebody that had made a mess of his life and dug a hole for myself with my own two hands, and came to Charleston Southern, having uh, been in the ministry for one year, barely was 19 years of age, and they took a chance on me, invested in me, and I've been able to go on around the world, get many other degrees, and write a lot of books, and edit some Bibles, and and speak uh, and have had a life beyond measure and I'll always be grateful for what happened in my years at Charleston Southern. So when I say I'm excited about being in chapel, trust me, I'm excited about being in chapel. And I look forward to the day that maybe I could, we'll all be together in person, all right? But as I share with you today, if you have your Bible, and I know some of you's got, you've got it memorized, but if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And I want to talk to you about the dark days that we find ourselves. I want to talk about dark days that are begging for light. Now, what do I mean by that? These are uncertain times with uncertain outcomes. These are days we're seeing things on television, we're seeing them online, we're seeing it through social, men, uh, social uh, media, and we're reading it in the papers. We're seeing things we never thought we'd see in the United States. In fact, it seems as though everything that's been nailed down is coming loose. And so in these uncertain times with uncertain outcomes, we need some certain wisdom. We need a sure word from God. And so I'm going to open God's Word. By the way, the Bible's single greatest leadership book ever written. And on these pages is wisdom beyond our years. And I want to remind even sharp, young university students. I also want to remind faculty that the Bible is the only book ever written that gives us wisdom beyond our years. I was 19. But through God's word, he gave me wisdom that maybe only a 30-year-old would have. And then the more I studied and the more I grew, then maybe wisdom that a 40-year-old. So I believe what happened to me is true for all of us. God's word can get, make you wise beyond your years. You want a head start? You want a quantum leap? Fall in love with this book. In fact, it's going to tell us how to live in uncertain times. How to live in dark days, even days that uh, are begging for light. And by the way, I wrote down another phrase. These are days that will take your breath away. There are things happening that we're seeing and feeling and, and hearing that make us numb. We're, some of us, we're not even sure what our next steps will be. Some of us are wondering, well, what about the occupation I was thinking was going to be my future or maybe my major? And it seems as though everything is being shaken. So let's feel our muscle, not our pulse. Let's take a deep breath and let's turn to the book that gives us wisdom, God's Word. And remember, God sees tomorrow the way you and I see yesterday. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, But know this, in the last days, difficult, dangerous times will come. In the last days, difficult, dangerous times will come. Men are going to be lovers of themselves. And that term for men there, of course, is generic for mankind. So there's going to be people that are, they care only about themselves. They love themselves. They're lovers of money. They're boastful. They're proud. They're blasphemers. They're disobedient to their parents. You know, isn't it interesting? Shakespeare wrote, 
There's only one thing sharper than a serpent's tooth, and that is an ungrateful child. And one of the characteristics is all of a sudden there are those that really don't want anything to do with what their parents stood for. Maybe really don't want to do anything that uh, some of our founding leaders have done. It also goes on to say in the last days there's going to be those that are ungrateful and those that are ungodly, unholy. There'll be those who lack natural affections. In other words, they give in to unnatural affections. There'll be those that are unloving, irreconcilable, slanderers, and those that have no self-control. They'll be brutal. And I want you to know the word translated brutal is a word that is also translated in some versions as fierce. It's a term for wildlife. It's the term of a roaring lion. And so this description given of angry, out of control, blasphemous, giving in to every uh, physical and fleshly crave or pleasure. And they're exchanging the, the, the glory of God and creation and making their own. In fact, it's as though we're almost re re trying to, to be animalistic in so many things. Now that description, I just want you to know, is describing men and women. It's describing a generation. Now, students, I, I want to be straight with you, straight up, as we used to say. This passage I have preached for decades, and it's been true in every decade. So while we're going through all we're going through, trust me, after you've lived for several decades, in fact, for uh, maybe even five decades, guess what? Then you're going to begin to understand that there really is an, a, a period of time entitled the last days. I believe there's going to be a moment, and I believe it could easily happen in our lifetime. In fact, there have been several times I've looked up thinking it was about to happen any moment. And that is when God comes back to this planet. Jesus said, in fact, the angels echoed when he was ascending into heaven after his death, burial, and resurrection on the Mount of Olives. And as he went up, there were hundreds watching at once as he ascended bodily, literally, physically uh, into heaven. And the angels said, you men of Galilee, why are you gazing into heaven? This same Jesus is going to come back in the same way that he's gone. Jesus is coming again. Now, students, you know how I look at that when I hear about in the last days, dangerous, difficult, uncertain times will come. You know what I believe? I believe there's going to be a moment when he blows the whistle and says everybody out of the pool. I believe Jesus could come. One reason I got through college at Charleston Southern University uh, very fast and, and or much earlier than the four years uh, laid out before me. Do you know why? I was convinced that Jesus was coming and I wanted to be out winning people to Jesus. Now I was a young preacher and young preachers will drive everybody crazy. I know I did it, and I hope we've got some young preachers that are driving people crazy because they've got a burden and they've got a, a boldness about them. But I want you to know in the last days, it's not a pretty picture. Last of all, it says, and they hold form to ungodliness. They hold on to the form of religion, the Bible says but yet they deny the power thereof. So we have a generation that will be religious, but yet they don't want to acknowledge the supernatural transformational power of the living God. So now that's not a pretty picture. We've spent some time on it. I wanted you to understand uh, if you get discouraged some days, if you get confused some days, uh, please though, keep your eyes on the prize. And that is, this is God's world and he is coming back. There's going to be a day of judgment, there's a day of reckoning, and there's also a day of promise. He's coming back for his children. Until then, he's given us some instructions on what to do in these uncertain and last difficult days. Are you ready? Well, here it is. Number one, and we've just seen it. Those first five verses in 
in 2 Timothy chapter 3, the first five verses tell us, number one, avoid the pleasure seekers. Now, if you'll let me put on the leadership hat, and I'm privileged to spend a lot of time, president founder of Student Leadership University, uh, trained a quarter of a million people, but I also want you to know I teach leadership to corporations and people all over the world. So when I talk to you about a leadership principle and I'm talking to you about the Bible, it's like my two favorite things in all the world. Are you ready? Do you understand that when we talk about what leadership is all about, one of the great leadership principles is that you're only going to be as successful as the people you have around you. You're only going to be as successful as the people you have closest to you. And Super Bowl winning coaches have said that. Uh, the President of the United States uh, has said that. Uh, Barack Obama, when he was elected president, made a profound statement. He said, four years from now, the American people will judge whether or not they want me to stay in the White House. And he hadn't even been in the White House yet because it was the transition period before the inauguration. The elections happens in November, and then early February is when he takes the oath. And so in that period of time, he has to figure out who are his cabinet going to be made up of and who is going to be closest to him. And here's what a young guy, first term senator, he'd only served one term as a senator. A lot of wisdom for a young guy. He said, I'm going to be judged whether I get to stay if I've done a good job. And the primary factor is going to be based on those that I choose during this transition period to be closest to me. Now, if a Super Bowl winning coach says that, John Maxwell, the leading uh, leadership expert, says that, and the President of the United States, and by the way, was reelected for another four years, when he says, it all comes down to those that I choose to have around me. I want to make a statement, students. I want you to write it down. Pen, pencil, lipstick, mascara, anything that'll write, I want you to write it down. You ready? Don't forget it. You're only going to be as successful as those you have around you. Now, we've all got our homies. We all got our peeps. We all got a crowd, a gang, you know, our inner circle. I used to call my inner circle the outer limits, and that's an old TV show of some weird stuff, so it was more applicable then, but it still describes the group I had around me. And I still love them like brothers, and we still will get together occasionally, and I still am trying to win some of them to the Lord, but I just want you to understand, I've had to learn that I can't let People around me rob me, or unintentionally usually, but because of the way they're living and what they believe, I have to be very careful who I have around me. I want people that are passionate for the Lord around me. I want people that are godly around me. So the Bible says these first five verses, you want to make something of your life with all the craziness going on? You want to still be able to have a family and still be able to help America uh, strive as we strive to become a more perfect union? Now, there's not any other country on the planet that comes, earth, that comes close to America. You can put number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, put them all together, they don't come close. But are we perfect? No. And that's why it even says in our founding documents that we've got to be striving to become a more perfect union. So as you get involved and you're trying to help us make some strides to help us be a more perfect union, as you answer the call of God on your life, I just want you to know that you and I have a chance, even though you look at what all's going on, to have a family, to make a difference in the world, to make a difference in our country, and to help make a difference in advancing the kingdom of God. And you'd start by making wise choices. Now, by the way, if you're giving in to alcohol or drugs, you're one of those that worry about how much money you're gonna make, I can honestly tell you, I have never really worried about how much money I was gonna make. Now, I've written a lot of books, and I've gotten royalties, and, I, and, and I've done beyond anything I ever dreamed of doing. But my motivation's never been, I'm telling you before the Lord, how much money I'm going to make. You know why? If I do the main thing, if I seek Him first and the kingdom of God first, all these other things get added unto me. 
So don't give in to being a lover of money more than of God, one of those that's boastful. You know, there's a lot of guys, young ladies, be careful who you give your heart to. They sound like they're rehearsing for an opera. Me, 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 me. It's all about them. And I want you to know the one God has for you, is, it's not going to be all about him. So young ladies, and by the way, young men, same thing's true. In other words, let's seek folks that's gonna be closest to us, those that are gonna influence us, our prayer partners, accountability partners, and folks that we take into our confidence. Choose wisely, avoid the pleasure seekers. Number two, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter three, that you have to anticipate the persecution of the saints. In other words, those that live godly will go through persecutions and it's going on all over the world. I'm so grateful uh, to be close to the ambassador for religious freedom, uh, uh, Sam uh, Brownback, uh, what a godly man, outstanding man. I'm grateful for open doors. I'm grateful for uh, the ministries that are helping us remember the persecuted church and our brothers and sisters that are having their homes threatened, their lives threatened, and all over the world, people are paying a great price for their faith. And that's why we need America to be strong and have our head in the game, because we're about the only thing standing for many, you know, probably almost a billion people of faith. All right, let's make sure we're what we need to be. But it goes on to say in verse 10, now this is Paul writing, but you have followed my teachings, you followed my conduct, my purpose, my faith, my patience, my love, and my endurance. Paul's been faithful, but listen to what he says. Along with the persecutions and the sufferings that came to me, and he names them Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, what persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from them all. In fact, all those who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. We're living in an age that says evil people, verse 13, and imposters will become worse. They'll be deceiving and they'll continue to be deceived. But as for you, I want you to continue in what you've learned and firmly believe knowing from those that you've learned them. So please understand, God's word tells us we're gonna go through some rocky times. There's gonna be press pressures. There's gonna be stress uh, fractures. There's gonna be faults that uh, cause quaking going on. And so please know with all this happening around us, you and I can still have a firm foundation. And I promise you, remember, I'm the guy, all the broken homes, foster homes, detention. I never had a foundation until I gave my heart and life to Jesus Christ. And if he's for me, there's nobody that can be against me. Now, so number one, avoid the pleasure seekers. Number two, anticipate there's going to be some persecution of the saints. Number three, it says, are you ready? Abide in the profitable scriptures. And I've already told you, the greatest leadership book, it's the greatest, it's God's word that gives us wisdom. Listen to what it says. And from childhood, you have known the sacred scriptures, which are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, here it is. All scripture, all scripture is given by the, the breath of God and is profitable, that's what the word inspiration means, the breath of God, and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and in training in righteousness, so that the man of God, again, that term for men and women, so that the young man of God, the young woman of God, verse 17, may become mature, and that word means complete, equipped for every good work. So, you ready? Abide in the profitable scriptures. So, avoid pleasure seekers. Anticipate, we're gonna go through some difficult, tough times. And by the way, please write this down. It's a quote from General Schwarzkopf, 
the hero of, of uh, Desert Storm and, and the leader of Central Command in Tampa that controls all our special forces. And here's what General Schwarzkopf, legendary hero, said. He said, the easiest way to be defeated is to be distracted. So I want you to know and understand, when I talk to you about all the problems and all this group and that group, I'm not trying to fix blame, I'm just trying to fix the problem. And I want you to be one of those that get opportunities to make a difference. And I'm talking about whether it's those that are hungry, those that are homeless, those that are abused. I'm gonna tell you, I've been standing up to bullies ever since I gave my heart and life to Christ, and we got bullies all over this planet. And so, just understand, so, under, you ready? Avoid the pleasure seekers. Don't have those habits in your own life. Don't be numbered among those. Number two, anticipate tough times. We're not gonna be distracted. Number three, abide in the profitable scriptures. Pitch your tent in the word of God. Students, do you know I've spent a lifetime studying this book? And I've, I've got several thousand volumes in my personal library of all kinds of wisdom through the ages. This is the book that everything revolves around. All right, abide in the profitable scriptures. And then last of all, it says associate associate with people that are positive associate with people who are successful paul talks about this is his last days he's about to be decapitated he's telling everybody to be strong with uncertainty going on and he's about to go be decapitated by uh, the roman emperor He's in the Maritime Dungeon. He says, he knows his time is about to end. Time of my departure is at hand. This is that same book, same, same context when he's giving us a word. Don't, don't give in to the moment, he says. And you know, guess what? He starts naming people. The rest of the, the book, 2 Timothy, the rest of the letter, the epistle, names people that have been encouragement to him, that have prayed for him, that have stood with him, that have been, and I've got what I like to call tag team partners, you know? Folks you can count on. Do you know we heard, I heard some news just last night about somebody that's been legendary and somebody that's been a hero, and I found out there's things in their lives that's not what it should be, and it was heartbreaking. And I'm on the phone with a pastor that is arguably the pastor of the most dynamic church or certainly in the top two or three in all of North America. This is a powerful, dynamic man of God, like friend for 40 years. And he and I were on the phone. And he said, Jay, you and I, you and I have got to promise each other we're going to finish strong. And I said, my man, I think we need to make a covenant that we're going to finish with the torch held high. We're not going to run to the tape. Remember what the coach said? Run through the tape, right? So guess what? Last night, and I'm just sharing my heart with you, I got with somebody, and it was by phone. You know, we're doing so many things, but, you know, there's a little distance between us now. But I want you to know we made a covenant that we were going to pray for each other, and we were gonna hold each other accountable. By the way, we've been doing that for 40 years, but when you realize that one of your heroes has given in and has melted under the pressure, whatever, I want you to know that should strengthen your resolve to say, dear God, I'm no better than anybody else on this planet. I'm just as capable of blowing it as anybody. But guess what? If you're for me, who could be against me? I want you to finish, Lord, what you started in me. Well, here you are at Charleston Southern, one of the most distinctive Christian universities in the world, and its reputation is growing day by day. And I, I'm grateful that I've been able to be on the foundation that I learned, and I got a degree that's gone on to be accepted uh, almost anywhere in the world I wanted to study. You know why? Because what you're doing if you'll do it right with all your heart, it's gonna give you a head start. So let's make up our mind. I'm gonna finish strong. I'm gonna be the student I need to be so that one day I'll be the man and woman 
I need to be. I'm so proud of you. Thank you for letting me share with you. And let's keep on keeping on. Well, I pray that you experience the Lord Jesus Christ in a powerful way through this online worship. And we want to give you a chance to respond. So you will see down below on the link, you will see a way to connect with us in the Office of Spiritual Life. There'll be an email address for David Dyer. That's ddyer at csuniv.edu. And for me, John Davis, jdavis at csu. NIV.edu. There's also a cell phone number there that you can text. If you made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, take out that phone, text us or email us right now. If you made a decision that you say, Lord, I need to walk with you more, or I've got some questions about my walk with Jesus, please email us or text us. If you would like to get connected to a discipleship group, if you would like to be mentored and grow in the Lord, this is a great way. Email us or text us. We thank you so much that you've been a part of this worship. We cannot wait to continue to see what God is doing. Remember, he's not just called you for a purpose. He's called you for a purpose in a relationship with him. May God bless.